Peace to the family yeah. out there. Peace to the family. We should be live right now. Yeah, he's going to be talking about hoodies. <laughs> I'm with a living legend and I'm about to introduce the brother, but before we do as usual, uh, let me get to a brief commercial. Okay, I see y'all coming in the room now. Yeah, let me get to a brief commercial. We got a great show for everybody tonight. Uh, we'll be back in about 30. I only got one commercial. We'll be back in about 30 seconds, y'all, all right? Oh, and this commercial is featuring this gentleman right here. So we'll talk about that too. The legendary Professor James Smalls come to Atlanta, Georgia for two days. April 6th and April 7th, you don't want to miss it. He's doing a public and a private event. Text me right now at 347-496-1022. That's 347-496-1022. The legendary Professor James Smalls, as you've seen him on Hidden Colors and all the rest of the documentaries, make sure you go to my link tree at linktree forward slash King Simon and Numero Beta. Professor James Smalls in Atlanta, April 6th and April 7th. All right. Without further ado, so welcome back to the platform, Professor James Small. Welcome back, my brother. Thank you, brother. So no, you going to be in Atlanta, huh? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to come down and check you out since you moved awesome. down there. I'm going to see what's up. See what's oh, going yeah. to a two-day event. Um, yeah. Make sure y'all get in contact with King Simon for that. If y'all in the Atlanta area, make sure y'all come check my brother, Professor James Small, uh, one of the greatest elders out there that's doing his thing doing it for so long the king i like that hat man I like that yeah, hat you know, this hat is done by a beautiful young sister and she also gave awesome. me a hoodie that says the king i go like all right oh the match hoodie you got the match hoodie with that got the match hoodie oh awesome awesome so listen so professor james small so um mm -hmm. this thing is very interesting mm -hmm. uh first of all I, I had a conversation with you i told you that um, I was just looking at some of your videos on YouTube and your most viral videos. You have some shorts and some videos talking about um, Tupac, um, Tupac and Biggie. In particular, a conversation you had with Tupac two days before he um, before he died and him right. saying that him and Biggie uh, were going to start a black distribution company. Right. So saying that to say, um, fast forward, it's 2024 now. Um, you know, black artists have been going through this and, and talking about this for so long. All of our greats, all of our icons, Michael Jackson, Prince, Sam Cooke, um, the latest one that one of the biggest artists in the world, platinum, beyond platinum artist Kanye West has decided to release his newest album, Vultures 2, on his own website because he said he's tired of getting raped by the streaming services. Streaming yeah. services are now in bed with the record labels. They have found a way to join forces and rape artists even more than they were being raped when they was physical CDs. So now artists are doing even worse than they were before. Um, yeah. Sad stuff. Sad stuff, uh, Professor Small. And I um, want to talk to you about, let's start out with this conversation. Because I talked to your brother. Brother was like, man, Small, Professor Small got to be lying, man. Tupac ain't say that. Cause I hear Tupac tell nobody else that. Where he come up with this information? So, yeah. where, where, give me some details. Where were you? Where was Pac? Were you on the phone? Were you in person? What yeah. exactly happened with this conversation with you and Pac right before he made a transition? Transition. So you got to walk it back. Cause most yes, people who say Professor Small, they don't they don't know who I am. Mm -hmm. um, a brother named Lamumba Shakur. Okay. And a brother named Zayed Shakur. Patrice Lumumba. No, Lumumba no. Shakur. Okay, okay. Shakur, okay. Who was married to Afini Shakur. Okay. The okay. mother of Tupac Shakur. Uh -huh. They got married in the same bedroom of Malcolm X's sister that I got married in. Mm. They were in Malcolm X's organization, OAAU, mm -hmm. before joining the Black Panther Party. Mm -hmm. After Malcolm's death, I became the imam over Malcolm's mosque, the Muslim Mosque, Inc. And I was an officer in the OAAU and liaison with the Black Panther Party and mm. the Shakur family. Mm. So people understand lineage. Break it down. Break it down. Zaid Shakur, the youngest of the Secure brothers, who got killed on the turnpike, was the husband of Asada Shakur. Mm -hmm. 
So I saw Asada just before she moved to Cuba. So y'all can understand that's after she had left, the, the, you know, the place. So we had a relationship as a family mm -hmm. relationship. Um, I'm old enough to be here to have this conversation. Most people in our group is gone. Right, right, right. <clears throat> Tupac had a close relationship with one of my children, a couple of my children. They were like this. Wow. When Tupac got shot the first time, mm -hmm. I got the first call after my one of my daughters got the call. When his mother and family got to the hospital, I was already there. Wow. With the sons of Africa. Did not know that. Trying to cover down on him because we thought the hit came from the cops in the South that he had to run in with in Atlanta. Yeah. And one of them was in the city that night and at that hospital. So what do you want to do that? So people want to have, they want to have a sense of why I had a conversation with Tupac. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You know, it was a relationship long before the conversation I had couple right. of nights before he died. He called the house that day. I was in <clears throat> my bedroom, actually, when one of my kids came upstairs and says, Daddy, Pac's on the phone. He wanted to talk to you. <clears throat> he had, I know he wanted to talk to me because I was pissed off at him about something. And I sent word to Sister Soldier, through Sister Soldier, to let him know I was pissed off with him. What was so you pissed off with him about? That's private business. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's family business. Okay. You know, like young youngsters, me and I was back and forth with youngsters stuff and his behavior, and I was like trying to call him on some stuff, right? Right, right, right. Um, his physician, when he disappeared out the hospital, y'all remember that? Yeah, he checked himself out. But this is say he disappeared out the hospital. Okay. Right? okay. And everybody was looking for him. Well, his physician was also my personal physician, my college comrade. And 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 someone I used to date earlier in life. That's how close all of us was up in there. Mm. All right. Mm. So if folks don't understand, why was he on the phone with him? <laughs> you just explained it. I just gave you all as much of it as I can give, right? And so that night when I got when um <clears throat> one of the kids asked him to come and said, Dad, Pop wanted to talk to you about something. And I got on the phone and he said, Hey Professor, you know, we had to the, the the kind of you know warm up conversation how you doing how i'm doing you know then he said look I'll, he went straight to it he says i'm going to be in new york next week i need to sit down with you i said what's up he said me and biggie he said this whole thing about me and biggie being at war he said that's not us mm. he said we ain't at war he said these publications and newspapers and these other people is trying to make us at war but he said me and biggie we working on a, pro a big project i said what y'all working on he said, we want to take control. We want to take control mm -hmm. of distribution of rap music. That was his exact words. Wow. Exact I words. That. That's his exact words. Wow. I said, brother, you know you're dealing with organized crime, and I named the ethnic nations that control you, right? He said, we know that. I said, well, you and Biggie ain't big enough to do this. He said, we're not alone. He said, we're organizing other brothers. So, Professor, this is before he got with Suge Knight. No, he's with Suge. This is two with days Suge. before he's killed. Oh, this is two days. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm thinking about because you just was talking about the first shooting. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, right, the right. first shooting was for Suge. That's when Suge came in and got him out of jail and did that whole thing. Right, right, but right. I'm right. talking about this, this call that I got is he's in Vegas for the fights. For the for the Tyson fight, right. Right. And so he calls while he's in Vegas. And he tells me about this distribution thing. And I tell them how dangerous the whole thing is. Yeah. And he said that they it wasn't just going to be him and Biggie, mm -hmm. that they were organizing with other young rappers. Mm -hmm. Indeed, there were a couple of other rappers. I think one of them was his cousin who was killed in New Jersey that very next week. Two mm -hmm. brothers taken out of Jersey. I forgot their names. Mm -hmm. And I meant to ask my youngest son the names of the two brothers, but y'all can find that out. Because mm -hmm. you know? they were family. And the two young brothers that were killed in Jersey was pretty up in the industry also. Mm -hmm. See, we we let the demon rats <laughs> run the music industry. Mm -hmm. we, we we let these people just scare us to death, mm -hmm. right? And so that he was very clear that he, they wanted to take over distribution. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. You're the biggest thing in the rap industry at this time, the hip hop oh. industry, mm -hmm. and 
somebody else is making all the money. If you're any kind of businessman, you're going to try to figure out how I'm going to make some money, some of that money. Mm -hmm. But when you're in an industry that's controlled by four or five different companies, when just three of them control 68% and the other two got the, you know, between 19, 27%, they're not going to cut you in. But let's go back, let's go back to the first brother where we can see that the industry moved on and a lot of people think it's cost him his life also. Mm -hmm. He was shot to death too. His name is Sam Cook. Mm -hmm. Many of the young people don't know Sam Cook. He died at 33 years old in the year 1964. I remember I just gotten into the Navy a week before he was shot and I was in the barracks when he got, when the word came, he was killed and the young white men were, were <laughs> applauding him. And, and, and we had some throwdowns that night. Wow. You know, wow. And, and I'll never forget that night because all of the shore patrol and the policemen that come in the barracks because we were warned over the death of Sam Cook. Yeah, I did. wow. But in 1959, Sam Cook established his own publishing company. Mm -hmm. And that was a big deal. Because he did it here in America. Mm -hmm. Nat King Cole, who was having the same issues Tupac was having, right? Mm -hmm. And trying to get some money out of his being able to perform and sing, established his record company in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Shortly after him, James Brown, trying to do the same thing, established his company in three places, Chicago, New York, and Augusta, in three small pieces. Mm -hmm. He would later pull it together and put his son, who had just gotten, this is James Brown now, who had just gotten his master's degree over uh, the, in, the, the company. Mm -hmm. Two months later, his son got killed in the Jersey Turnpike when he got rear-ended by a tractor trailer truck. Shit. Hello? You know, listen to the bouncing ball because sometimes we don't want to, you know, study history. History will erase the mystery. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. got to know history to erase the mystery. Yeah. See what's really going on around you. And so, come back to Sam because Sam Cook is so important. You know, he he was one of the first artists that was given an advance of about what is a count of one point three million dollars today by mm -hmm. RCA. Mm -hmm. That was big money back then. Right. But Sam owned his own masters. Right, right, right. But when he came out with his own record label, that's when there was a problem. Mm. Because with his own record label, he could do his own distribution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shortly after that, he was shot to death in Los Angeles. And to this day, no one is clear on what happened in that. Uh, motel office where we shot, you know. Um, I just wanted to bring that up to come back to Tupac. Yeah, tell people, yes, I talked to Tupac. To me, Tupac wasn't a favorite famous rap artist. He was just a kid that was a friend of my kids. That's mm -hmm. how I knew him. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I wasn't into the music like that. Didn't know the music like that. I just knew these young people and they were friends. Mm -hmm. And this was a young man who came from a family with whom I was very close friends and political comrades. So he had a special kind of hookup mm -hmm. in that way. Mm -hmm. And so um, he was serious about this. He was clear about this. He was coming to me to get political advice on how to move forward with this. But there's something else that we have to go back to. Please. You remember James and Tume? Yes. One day James and I, and I bumped into each other, but we knew each other, you know. Mm -hmm. But James introduced me to something I'd never heard about it before. It was called the Columbia Study. Mm. It was in 1972 that Columbia Records commissioned a study called the Study of Soul Music Environment, a Feasibility and a Marketing Strategy Study that was carried out by the business school at Harvard University. Mm -hmm. And in this study, they kept it pretty much a secret for 50 years. Shit. It was just published recently in a book. There's a couple of books I want to recommend that people get. So I hope y'all got the pains, but you can talk about it later. Yeah. Um, 
one of the books is called, let me, I'm going to make sure I get that right. Somebody the write Spanish. this down in the chat. Somebody write this in the chat. Yeah. Um, one of it is called Power 101. Mm -hmm. The Harvard Report on Soul Music and the American Dream. Mm -hmm. The second one is called The Anatomy of the Record Industry or of a Record Industry Company. Mm -hmm. But it's dealing with that same report from Harvard. Right? Mm -hmm. And I think that one is Robert Brown. Or Robert, there's a third one, Robert Brown, the profitable study of exploitation of black, the black music market. Mm. And these are the big record companies that's commissioned these studies. Right, it's really right. called how to control the black folks in the music industry and keep them from making any money. Damn. Okay. Damn. Damn, Professor. So and then the, the, the big book, though, the one that published the whole report, is called The Study of the Soul Music Environment, the Harvard Report, censored by Dr. Logan Westbrook. Mm -hmm. Y'all got to get that book, because I'm going to get it, because you mm -hmm. made me start looking all this stuff <laughs> up, right? Now, I got to get it. The Profitability and the Feasibility Study of the Exploitation of the Black Music Market. Mm -hmm. And what the Harvard report, and this is what James had told me today, we bumped into each other on the street. I think we both were coming from an acupuncture thing. Mm -hmm. And he said, what the Harvard report said is that you don't have to take their masters, give them the masters, mm -hmm. you know? But you keep control of, what's, what's that piece? Um, or publishing or? The publishing. Yeah. Keep control of the publishing uh -huh. and you control distribution, no matter how much money you give them, you can you will control them till the day they die. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. in that piece where RCA had given uh, Sam Cooke nearly equivalent to a million plus today, mm -hmm. they gave him his masters for 30 years. Because if he got for 30 years, it rolled back to us, and then it would be even bigger than it was when he was alive. Right. But, Shit. Wow. So that, that's what this industry is about. Right? Wow. And so it's a multi trillion dollar industry now, where if you go back over the years, yeah, right? who's making all that money? The poor young brothers, most of them go in the industry, come out broke because they go in, don't know how the industry works. Somebody gave him a limo. He got all the all the, all, all the fly stuff in the limo, all the champagne, the caviar and everything. He gets to his five suites at the hotel. He gets to fly on these private jets. He don't know at the end of the day, somebody come in with a pad and say, this is the bill. So all that money you thought you had made just went out the door before the check got handed to you to what was left over. Mm. Right, mm -hmm. and you looking up like, what's up? Mm -hmm. You know, and what's up? You just got taken, and that's mm -hmm. why so many of the brothers in the industry today is poor, broke, especially the older brothers. No retirements, no insurance, mm -hmm. can't take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. And Park and them understood this because one of the things we only it was a short conversation, but one of the things he was concerned about. Was like, how are we going to take care of ourselves when we can no longer sing? When right, we can no right. longer perform. Right. And he felt that distribution, if they could get control of distribution, this was the way to make the real money. Right, right, you know? right. And I remember, um, what's that brother's name? Master P, the brother who was doing his own thing out of the car trunk. You know, you know he got the visitation. Come on, we ain't gonna lie. We know he got the visitation. He said, you can do that, but you better not encourage nobody else to do that. Mm. Okay. He got the visit. I don't know the details of the visitation, but I know the industry. And I've had children in this industry for the last 30 years. You told me something about, um, I think, Teddy Raleigh one time in his group, Black Street. Yeah, and what? and and... Well, the same kind of thing. They wanted them, from what Teddy told me, to do rap music. But Teddy and them are rhythm and blues artists. And he mm -hmm. said they weren't going to do rap music. They were going to stick to rhythm and blues. Mm -hmm. And they were informed that, well, if you don't do that, your stuff ain't going to leave the warehouse. Again, we back to that distribution thing. Right, 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 right. Yeah. right. And so, so yeah, yeah. remember music, and I was looking up some stuff. Because people won't understand what music is. They don't. The history, I mean, music as far as scientists, anthropology, and archaeologists can go back 40,000 years. Yeah. And all of it begins in Africa. 
Yes. So I, was going, I was trying to find a little piece that I wanted to hit the young people up with. Oh, that would um, be wonderful. What, 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 what music, you know. While you look for that, Professor, let me ask you a quick question about music. We hear about how powerful music is. I'm just curious. Do you think music, like we know our people, when I say our people, I mean the melanated man and woman across the world, how much music means to us. Um, they say we are the rhythm of the planet. Do you think music is as influential to other groups as it is to black people? Oh, just absolutely. As? Okay. absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. This is the piece that I was looking up. And, and I was asking, I asked the question, what effect does music have on the human mind? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And these are some of the answers I got back. And I got like, wow. Music can have a powerful effect on the human mind, stimulating all areas of the brain at the same time. Researchers suggest that music can improve mental alertness, improve mood, reduce anxiety, reduce blood pressure, reduce pain, improve quality, keep the brain young. It can help you to control fear, make you ready to fight, increase pleasure, increase feeling of well-being, increase blood flow to the brain regions that control emotions, improve memory. All of this has been proven in studies in terms of the effect on the human mind, but it can have the same negative effects. Though it can reduce stress, music has been proven to reduce stress, reduce pain and symptoms of depression, as well as improving cognitive and motor skills, spatial, temporal, and learning uh, 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 neurogenesis, you know, and so we don't, we think of music as just the thing that we enjoy, um, but music affects us in all kinds of ways. It's like a magnet. It's just kind of grab you and pull you into it. So whatever message you put on the music gets imprinted in your subconscious right, and affects right. your behavior. Music can make you act negatively. Music right. can make you want to fight. Right. Music can make you get angry depending on the kind of music you play. Mm -hmm. And so the people in the record industry, they've done these studies mm -hmm. that have told them all of these things by major universities, the Princeton, the Harvard, the Cambridge, that have put out these studies through the years. Mm -hmm. And so they sit back and manipulate us. We think we just having fun. We love this particular artist. He just dress right, look like, sound right. But no, somebody has presented them to you. Mm -hmm. They've been presented to you as a product to influence your serotonin and your melatonin. Mm -hmm. And you don't even know it's being done. Mm -hmm. You don't even know it's being done. And then when you come to just, I think there was one thing, it's even in the Bible. This is deep. In the Bible, I forgot what chapter. I don't even want to go look at what they talk about. You not only got to listen to the music in your soul, the Bible says you got to listen to the music in your mind. Oh, yeah. That's deep. You that, know, that this concern is, about music can go back that far. It goes and pretty. I, it goes pretty far, Professor. You know, back in uh, ancient times, I think ancient Greece or something mm -hmm. like that, they were banned certain chords from being played. So mm -hmm. you couldn't play certain chords or certain melodies. It was in front of people. Now, just looking back at it now, to mm -hmm. ban a chord—that's wow. That's some wild think stuff. Of it now. <laughs> I think who Bobby Hemming was the first one that dropped this on me because I didn't know what an octave was. I still don't quite know what an octave is. But you know Bobby Hemming. People always say Bobby is orbiting because he's out there. Yeah. He's a metaphysician and one of the better ones, him and Brother yeah. Phil Valentine. Yeah. And uh, Bobby said, but yeah, brother, we were at a conference in Detroit, ASCAC mm -hmm. or something. And Bobby was telling me, he said, man, because he had some 33s, and he had his turntable playing his music. I said, why are you bring all that stuff from home, man, and setting up at your table, taking space? You could have just slipped a disc. He said, no, man, in this new stuff, they've taken out three octaves. That. He says, there's certain things in the music, like you calling it chords, but I think that's the same thing as calling octaves, right? Mm -hmm. He's saying, in the old music of the 60s and 70s and the 50s, there was something in there that allowed you to hear the music feel the music, and be moved and stimulated almost physically by the mu music. Well, they took that one that made you feel and move. And they took that out. Mm -hmm. Now you hear the music, but you're not being, you're not feeling, yeah. Yeah. You're not being, you're not feeling that music. You, you know what the, I'm 
It's it's very hard. That's very true, Professor. Because listening to music on a on a on a computer or on the phone, you can't mm. hear the bass like that. Like you said, the octaves and things like that. There's certain low frequencies it, 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 that that, that you can't hear because it's because of the headphones or the computer or even the CD. So yeah, Bobby would talk about vinyl a lot mm -hmm. and uh and, and the importance of vinyl. vinyl. Yeah. So, so you know Bobby's teaching then because oh, yeah, he, yeah, he, very he's been this for a minute. Yeah, and very so, familiar. I started looking, I said, you know, that makes sense. Because the music that made me when I was young and I'm hanging out at Club 17 down in South Carolina on Highway 17 by the road or across from old Frank McKenzie's place. Mm -hmm. And one of those vinyl dropped at 45, I knew automatically to reach for Betty Ann. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, yeah. I didn't even have to think. I, I didn't have to know where she was in the club. Once I heard that song, I know just where to go. And then nobody else better know. They better not reach for her. Because Small come and dance Betty Ann for that number. <laughs> and there was a music affects every aspect of the human psyche. Every aspect. It stimulates your serotonin. It stimulates your melatonin, okay? And they've done studies on this stuff. The music industry have commissioned these studies. Mm -hmm. They know what they're doing. They mm -hmm. know where to market, why to market, how to market, and to who to market based on these studies. Mm -hmm. They know where to market based on the political condition of that community versus the political condition of this community. Mm -hmm. They know where to what to sell to the impoverished community and what to sell to the middle class community, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They study this stuff. This is what they do. It's called business. This is America. But we're the one have to be aware how right. business works. Yeah. Well, Park and them have begun to learn how the business industry of music works. Now, I'm say ask, he bro. got killed just because of that fight. I I was one who thought that the fight thing was staged just to set up a motive in case the killers was caught who they were probably supposed to get caught that night but they were slick enough to slip the drag net mm -hmm. but i think he was hit for what he was doing in the music industry and not because of that fight in the lobby mm. Mm. let me ask you this professor do you think since we're talking about the power of music and uh, um the the frequencies and the octaves and the the tones and the pitches, everything within this, within music, how it affects our overall being. Do you think the man that made the song "Sexual Healing"? Do you think his 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 death was a? You think that was a hit? And I'm referring to Marvin Gaye. Yeah, brother. Talk to I me mean, about. It. Talk to the me. myth of Motown is a myth too. You know, we, we give Motown uh, space it don't deserve. It's a shame that most of the young artists in Motown died young. Nobody and on drugs. What was that all about? Yeah, yeah, I don't need dem demigods to make me feel good as a black man. I need truth and history. Get right. rid of the mystery. You know, right. I love Mary Wells, but you know, she died so young. But look at what she left for Motown. Look mm -hmm. at the Temptations. Almost all of them died young. Yeah, you know, look at all of the great. I mean, Smokey made it, and then the guy who owned the company made it, and people who was at the top made it. Made it. Mm -hmm. But I had an incident that happened to me once. I'm gonna tell you this. People can hear for what they hear. Okay. I am who I am, and I'm most ready. of them don't know who I am. I'm riding okay. on a bus uh -huh. from New York to California, 1968. Why am I riding on a bus? Because I'm packing some heat. Right? <laughs> so wow. I can't get on the airplane, even though you could carry your piece on the plane back in those days. But a young black man getting on the plane in the 60s, the way I was moving, I couldn't. So I'm packing heat and other stuff. I got him. So I'm taking the bus from New York to California. We get to just outside of Detroit. And I'd been told multiple times that I favored Marvin Gaye. I never saw it. But I guess the way I'm on my beard back then and my fro back then, and I had some hair, no hair now, but I had a nice slick fro back in the day. <laughs> and so this guy sees me. I'm wearing a black leather jacket. I'm in the outfit. I'm suited and booted, right? And he thought I was Marvin Gaye. So I don't correct him, this white guy comes to shake my hand and says how nice it is that we're now in business together. You hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, yeah. I'm not in the industry then. I'm just into black power, black movement. I ain't, but I, I just I was just curious. I I don't know, identify myself to him as we stepped down off the bus that day. Mm -hmm. And I would learn later 
that at that same point that I'd meet that man as I become more conscious, that that's when the others bought out Motown. Mm. The other biggies in the industry, even though Motown was still moving as Motown, and we thought it was still a black thing, but it wasn't a black thing no more. But mm-hmm. 1968. Mm-hmm. And so the things we are talking about now, this controlling of soul music, this manipulating and controlling not only the music makers, but controlling the minds of the music hearers, those who are receiving the music. Right. The music, because when you're in control of distribution, that gives you the power and the money to be in control of the artists and what they come up with to be distributed. Right. Yeah. Like the locations when certain people would cut records, they'd have to take it to certain companies and those big boards that have to approve the lyrics so they would send them back because you got to go do this over. You got to do a do-over. This is too black. You got to do a do-over. This ain't sexually graphic enough. Mm. No matter how musically wonderful the piece was. Yeah, I've, I've definitely heard it, uh, of that, telling them, telling artists to do it over, do it again, do it again. Yeah, you know what's what's it's interesting? They had they were, that we got to remember. These record companies are owned by human beings. These mm-hmm. human beings belong to certain ethnic nations, and they have their own interests and attitudes towards the black nation at heart. Indeed, and the controlling the behavior <clears throat> of massive group of black people. Music has been one of the primary tools for mind control in the Mm -hmm. black community, particularly in the United States of America. And I'll show you how powerful music is. Dr. King and them, they're sitting in a church down in Alabama. Mm -hmm. The Klan is outside with the police who's the Klan too in the street Mm -hmm. saying, you need, you ends better not come out here. Mm -hmm. People in the church ain't got no guns. They may have one or two from the deacons and the other brothers up in there. But they're outside against hundreds of clan folks with guns and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then those preachers would go into, ain't gonna let nobody turn me round, turn me round, turn me round. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me round. And they put that music in the soul of the people. Mm-hmm. And then that, once they get them up, they go like, for I'll be a slave. I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. Before you know it, 200 black folks walking out that church with no guns, up against all them guns. You know what the mother folks do? Move the hell out of the way because they can't figure out what is the power of that. Damn. What happened in that church? Yeah. Black music touching the soul and the heart and the mind of the black masses that say, ain't gonna let nobody turn me round. Turn me around, and it didn't. Our people were so courageous, it makes me tremble right now just to think of it. These weren't no Panther Party members. These weren't no Nation of Islam members. These weren't mama, daddy, uncle, and aunties who just went to church on Sunday. Yeah. But the power of music gave them the courage. Courage. Face right. down the clan, the police, the whatever these things were. Yo, that, that, that was such something a- about the power of music, no matter who uses it. That was touching. That story was touching. Yo, Professor, I'm loving your stories, man. I'm loving I'm loving, <laughs> I'm loving all of this, you, man. You live long enough, you, you learn a lot of stuff. You have a lot of experiences. And some of them don't mean nothing like the man on the bus in the beginning. It mm. would take almost a decade before I realized who the guy on the bus was. I'm not going to call out what organization, you know what I'm saying? People who, the guy on the bus who said we now together. He thought I was mobbing, gave me the big hug up and everything. You got you, you can't say his name. I don't know his name, but I'm talking about the organization. He called oh, okay, okay. Yeah, we, I and know, uh, I, 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 you, all right. <laughs> people in the chat, y'all know what he's talking about. Y'all yeah, know, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah you, people, y'all know them YouTube folks. Y'all know what he's talking. Y'all know exactly what he's talking. About. We got some rules now. We got to follow. We can't even call the spade a spade, no matter yeah. how the sand's on it. You know. Right. No, indeed. But that's cool. We we black folks. We got other way to say what we want to say yeah, and be exactly. heard in the way we want to be heard without saying what they can get an attitude with. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, I was just watching a video the other day. Um, somebody um, 
because Kanye Kanye done started up a whole storm with people talking about streaming and not just Kanye a lot of artists are talking about streaming services now and they mm. threw up they was throwing up some old clips of Suge Knight he was talking about star and maybe he got it from Pac he was talking about starting a black distribution um network um Irv Gotti you know what they actually say I don't know if you know who Irv Gotti is but Irv Gotti office got raided Irv Gotti, from what I hear, Irv Gotti, uh, Prince, and the chat could tell me, a guy named Prince J, I hope I'm saying his name right, and I think Dame Dash, all of them wanted to start it, this black mm -hmm. distribution thing, and all of a sudden, things started happening to all of them. So mm -hmm. what I want to what I want to ask you, if there's a, if there's a, a um, you know, there, there's a history of once you want to start a black distribution or once you want to be independent, things start happening to you or your family, how would you advise a brother, a, a brother in 2024 to move forward if he say, Professor, I want to move like this. I'm a millionaire. I got influence, but I'm afraid that the threats are going to come toward my family. You got to have an organization. You you say that secretly, again. You have to have an organization. You got to okay. secretly organize and mobilize. Uh, okay. You have to secretly organize, and that's what I was telling Pop that day. You uh -huh. got to secretly organize and mobilize. Uh huh. And and because you're talking about billions and billions of dollars, right, right, every year, right, going into somebody's pocket, right, basically off of you telling your emotional, spiritual, psychic story to the world mm -hmm. in music, mm -hmm. okay, because um, that's what music is. Music is storytelling, right. Okay? Music is drama. Mm -hmm. And so you're expressing your drama, you're telling your stories, but you're using your natural God-given earth-based rhythm to right. do it. And ain't nobody else can do that like you can do that. Right. right? And it affects everybody. White folks hear your music. Mm -hmm. They may not be the dance, whether they be moving a little different than we do, but they're trying to find that vibration that you let out because it attracts them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We just all into it. It's like you ever see a black baby could be two days old, play some music and see what happens. Oh, yeah. they stop making it because it's in there. It, it, the, the connect is clear. Uh -huh. So when you got that clear connection to the organism, the human organism, and the sounds and vibration coming from another human organism, then uh -huh. you can use it to affect that community of people, good or bad. Uh -huh. And when you control the distribution of it, which is the instrument that makes money off of it, then you can control the lyrics mm -hmm. that the artist sent for. You mm -hmm. can control the intensity of any sound. You control what gets marketed. Right. So an artist can't even bring positive music to his own people if they want to. Mm -hmm. mm. The market won't allow it. Well, I got a call two years ago. You ever heard a brother named Burner Boy? Yeah, yeah, burn, yeah, everybody know Burner Boy. Yeah, he hot. Nigerian no artist. Boy, he burning so up the Burner Boy to publish the piece him and I did together. Oh, that's that's what's up. That's what's up. What, See, you sitting there saying, what you talking about, small? Right? <laughs> that's what you mean, right? No, no, I ain't saying that. But Burner Boy cut a piece yeah. on one of my lectures. It's a lecture I did on the Berlin Conference. You probably seen him with me at the blackboard talking about how Europe invaded Africa. Yeah, yeah. But he took that piece uh -huh. and took my entire dialogue and put music to it That's dope. and he intersects between each each of my little few seconds talk this yeah. shit is bad wow. he sent me a copy i made an agreement i won't let nobody else hear it i think i did let my son hear it but i won't let anybody hear it and i will wipe it out i'm sorry i wiped it out now but i had to stay with my dignity and principle because i promised i would do that and it was supposed to be on the last album but somebody nixed it and I spoke to his lawyer and said, well, what's up? And he said, well, they decided they want to put it out with this album. They may bring it out as a single. Um, somebody looked at that shit and said, okay, I don't know. You're, you're not putting the small out there with that stuff. With you and him together. Damn. So, Werner, if you ever see this interview or your lawyer see this interview, put the piece out. Let the people hear it. Because I'm dropping some secret science and some heavy science. That's when I didn't have no gray beards yet. I was like young. That energy was like, bang, you know, coming out of my mouth and stuff. I mean, I'm a scientist, but then I was super young scientist. Yeah, yeah. And uh, when he matched that with his skills as a musician, yeah. with that Afro beat up in it, this piece is, I'm telling you, 
I knew this was gonna be the number one record on the label. Damn. On that album. So, somebody got rid of it. Burner, y'all put it out there. You Secret heard that? He, he, gonna no hit us. he gonna hit us. He Secret gonna hit us. He gonna hit us. To have no fear. You know, who put that bully Kai? Like that's what Lane says. You know. Yeah. We've got to just do what we got to do. He got that's a revolutionary it. spirit. I, I like Burner Boy. He got a revolutionary I love spirit. Him. I love that young brother. He's just been on it. He has been on it. Um, I love his mom. I saw her spirit when she took that award for him last year. Yeah. So, you know, he come from a solid family of conscious African people. Uh -huh. um, he should get more play in America than he's getting. Uh -huh. His music is sweet uh -huh. to the African soul, wherever the African is, you know. L let me ask you this, Professor. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm an 80s baby. I wasn't around in the 70s and the 60s, you know, while a lot of things was going on and transpiring in America. Mm -hmm. uh, from what I hear, some people say is that during the inception of rap, when it first got introduced, a lot of the older black people at that time were hating on it and they didn't believe in it. And yeah, people of other true. cultures were will, people of other cultures were willing to invest in it because the black people who had money thought it was some foolishness at the time. I, I the think name? that's mythology. This was okay. coming out of the black community. It was coming from their children. Uh -huh. Now you, you can get down to maybe a handful of people in the music industry uh -huh. and in the rhythm and blues industry that may not invest in them. Mm -hmm. But, you know, black folks was loving rap and making rap and hip hop what it was long before white folks even know it was being done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was the black community loving it. Mm -hmm. And it didn't, I, I love Cool Herc and the whole mythology around that and how two turntables at the park and the Bronx, but that's not where this all started. <laughs> you got brothers who kicking this back in the 40s. Right, right. You know, brothers kicking this back in the 50s. Right. I know brothers like Jerome Ford and Onion, they didn't have no turntable because they didn't have no mixing board. But Onion was on the on the the, the snare drums, mm. and Jerome was on the one table spinning and talking over the records. But you mean it only got to be rap when you had a second turntable? Come on now, they talk about history will erase the mystery. Let's say the brothers heard them; they took it to another level. I'll agree with that. But mm. you didn't you didn't invent that. You didn't create that. That was the music. Mm -hmm. Somebody put a piece on the internet on this group of four brothers. It's in the forties, and he's dropping his signs. I go like, damn, he was just wrapping his stuff up. But they dress in the suits and ties, and they, you know, they got mm -hmm. their hair a little straightened out with some conkaline in it. But they're still <laughs> dropping the rap. Right? right. It's the musical gender that has always been with us. It just advanced itself, and especially in the seventies and eighties because some very serious things had happened in our community at that point in history, where mm -hmm. the Black Panther Party had been decimated and killed and shot up and thrown in prison. Malcolm had been assassinated. Dr. King had been assassinated. And they stopped taking the music out of all of our schools in our community. They disbanded the drum and bugle corps that was parading in our community every week. They did all of these things. Oh, yeah. Murder us to cut off the wow. communication between us about what we were doing to resist white tyranny and genocide. And the spirit, the African spirit says, we don't need any instrument to make music, mm -hmm. okay? You can make music with your tongue and your throat and it'd be as powerful as anything they can make with an orchestra. And Beat bam, box. you know beatboxing, beatboxing. You know? Yeah. Biz Marquis, you remember Biz Marquis? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. And the, the, the white community was the one laughing at it. Okay. And now you can't see a commercial without it. Without it, yeah, yeah. Okay. So no, our people, there were some of our people who when that when 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 um because remember we didn't have that many people with money to invest in the music industry to start with. So that is that's a myth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We had very few people who invested in the music industry mm -hmm. because we didn't have that kind of fluid capital. Right, in the right. 1970s that we got now with these millionaires and billionaires, we didn't have that then. This is something that has come about in the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. you know? And so our people was like just trying to survive. The youth has always been the vanguard that initiate any new movement. All right. The youth has always been the vanguard in mm -hmm. every civilization, every time in history and in every culture. Okay. And so 
what they've tried to do when, with, with hip hop is to separate the black youth from the black people. Mm-hmm. And from the elders, especially, right? Well, that's the, what I mean. From the yeah, elders and the yeah. fathers, the mother, they when they realize that our youth, even without the tools that people have to strike out, you've just destroyed the pan. You didn't destroy the panther, but you decimated them. You decimated Black Liberation Army. You decimated international commanders. You decimated your H- Hutu fighters. Because there was other fronts out there fighting too. Without that, wasn't the Black Panther Party. That people mm-hmm. don't know their names, but mm-hmm. we were up against the same forces, mm-hmm. and so. The community needed something. This is before you introduce the concept of gangs in the same way you're trying to do it now in Haiti, right? You mm-hmm. give the kids the guns and then call them gangs when they start using it. And then you come in our community to clean it up and kill our youth and throw them in prison. Mm-hmm. After you skip all the dope in there that your CIA brings in the country to build, Mr. I'm not gonna call his name, to mm-hmm. Arkansas, we'll, we'll leave it there, all right? Mm-hmm. And, 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 what what the early rappers before that concept which i heard this one european man i'm not gonna say what ethnic group he's from who was big in the rap industry said that he created gangster rap this is not a black man Uh he takes credit he's bold about it he's from another ethnic group that had big footprints in the music industry he Uh said he created gangster rap meaning he created took the music, that beautiful music, and put it in a negative gender, uh-huh. have it negatively influence black youth. And he did it deliberately and still made money. What's your thoughts? Um, have you ever had conversation with any of the uh, so-called gangster rappers, uh, Ice Cube or, well, not Ice Cube, um, what's his name, um, Dr. Dre or Snoop? Or any of them have you ever not, got not directly you? but two years ago i was in a conference with about 200 of, of the rappers everybody mm-hmm. and a sister al michelle got me involved because they were talking about the snoop and everybody was involved um starting a union a rapper's union somebody Shug Knight was talking about that that's the video i seen Shug Knight was yeah yeah, yeah. well Shug, Shug wasn't involved in this piece this is last year okay yeah but somebody that seems to mix it. Everybody was there. This was Curtis Blow called us together. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so everybody was there. Everybody that's anybody was yeah. there. On, on, we had a, a Zoom, two Zoom piece with more than 200 of the rappers on each occasion. And that gave me a chance to express myself and talk to them about the things I'm talking about now. I think that's why I first told people about that meeting, phone call with me and Tupac. That's mm-hmm. how it got out. It was mm-hmm. in that that gathering okay um but many of the brothers understand they understood they were taken for a ride mm-hmm. they, we were talking about this for a couple of hours they understood but mm-hmm. when they were youngsters they didn't understand that but mm-hmm. these, they, these are mature men now business yeah. men now many of them have lost but many of them have survived but they're still because they're writers they're producers they're directors in this industry um but the the move they wanted to make last year to create a rapper's union. And I remember there was a couple of dudes who weren't rappers, but were slick, fast talking Negro collaborators, I call them, because I can smell them. I come from the black movement. I know when the when the man got his man in the house. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I remember that night when they copped me off and copped me short because they were like, you know, let this thing get good, say too much of this. Right, right. And these slick talking legal talkers, and then everything just. You know, because you if, the, are, if the rappers union were to come together, it'll be the biggest union in the world. Mm. That's the richest and most powerful. Mm. And it can take care of its people in retirement and insurance and other things and bury them in the. But somebody has stopped the roll. And for those who hear this show, y'all need to get it rolling again. Yeah, yeah. You know? Do you, um, the genre of rap it seems as though with our music genres come and then they die down do you see that happen uh like like jazz isn't as you know a lot of our people don't even know we invented jazz um because jazz has been made too expensive by the same industry explain that explain that what do you mean by that jazz involved having an at least a small orchestra a small band multiple people must get paid right Mm -hmm instrument must be moved around 
how many black community clubs could afford that? What, what used to happen, jazz artists who were playing downtown in the white communities would then come uptown on Saturday night when they were done in the white community. That's why jazz clubs is always happening after midnight. Mm. You know? Mm -hmm. And so jazz is just as much akin to hip hop as is rhythm and blues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you had seen, if we would go back to the day of jazz, that was hip hop for their day. Right. Right. They couldn't say what me and you or your generation was saying, right? With words, they took an instrument and said the same thing with, the instrument. with feelings. Okay. Yeah. Because <clears throat> they, you were worrying about the clan then and this and that. So you couldn't say with words mm -hmm. that your generation could say with words. So they said it with a guitar. They could tell a story with a guitar. Oh, they yeah. could tell a story with a saxophone. They could tell a story with a trombone. Okay. And you could hear the words and the vibration because you're an African. You it's understand powerful. language and sound. Yeah, right? it's powerful. It's normal. No matter how long we've been away from home. Yeah. Somebody speaks Europe to you on a horn, you hear it. Mm. You, you can't interpret it in language, but you interpret it in spirit. Mm -hmm. That's rapping mm -hmm. with a horn. Mm -hmm. And so we have to just understand that there is a continuity from the music we're singing when we come from Africa on that ship, the mm -hmm. music we're singing in the fields when we work, the mm -hmm. music we're singing when we get in the urban community like in New Orleans that evolve into jazz, the music mm -hmm. we're singing that goes into the church as spiritual. That music that came out of the fields that we used to call work songs that became blues. See, it was work songs in the day in the field, but at nights when we went to a little roadside club, it became blues. Mm. I'm, I'm in a situation where my baby done left me. I've been working in that field all day because this other brother who ain't got a job done slid, slid on up in there. And so I'm telling that story with a song, mm -hmm. you know? But it wasn't just my story I was telling, right? I was telling the story of a lot of other brothers who were working in that field. Mm -hmm. And that bonded us together. Rag music was 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 our music that slipped into bebop, right? You know? right. And then slipped from bebop into a higher form of jazz. Mm -hmm. That slipped into rhythm and blues, and then soul, and then rap. Mm -hmm. But it's the same music. It's just different genders of the same music telling the same story of the same people at a different time in history and different locations in history. Because rap is basically an urban music, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. an urban expression of the music it mm -hmm. will become rural after a while but it starts out heavily as an urban music mm -hmm. jazz started out as an urban music but mm -hmm. blues is a, a rural music you know mm -hmm. rag is, is is like really what we would call super ghetto music when we first started coming to these big cities and we were look poor and ragged and beat down you know that's what rag, the, the song we were making and the rhythm we expressing, we called it rag. Uh -huh. And so, and when we started getting to where we can get to downtown and to downtown New York and Chinatown and involving the socialist movement and mixing the white folks, then we came up with bebop. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Because we now out here with, the, with with these white folks, equal. Right, right. You know? right. So every one of our music represented a period of time that we were expressing ourselves politically, socially, culturally, and economically in a certain kind of way. Mm -hmm. And each, with each time, all of our music in one sense is a protest music. Mm. But at the same time, it is a protest music that can inspire. Mm -hmm. And what they tried to do with rap at the end, but it didn't work with gangster rap, was to keep us from having that inspiration. Mm -hmm. in the 70s and 80s that they thought they had killed when they killed Dr. King and then they killed Malcolm X and they killed these brothers and sisters in the Panther Party and Black Liberation Army. They thought they had killed something and it got reborn as rap. Mm -hmm. The rappers were the Black Panthers. You mm -hmm. understand? They were the new Black Panthers. But they didn't have no guns in Black Beret. They had their voice and their attitude. And what is it? N-W-A? Yeah, NWA. Black Panther Party. It's just that they ain't got no rifles now. But they got the attitude. 
And with music, they can make a kid feel the same way the Black Panther Party made him feel. The world's a system that's suppressing them. That's the yeah. power of music. Yeah, no, 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 that, that's super powerful. Um, r- before we get out of here, Professor Smalls, because I told you I didn't want to keep you more than an hour, I want to thank everybody for um, donating to your Cash App. Uh, the last show we did. Oh, I really want to thank yeah. people. That was a needed time. And to all my brothers and sisters on Black Magic, thank you, thank you, love you, love you. You really helped the brother out. Because they really was, I didn't even realize how many medical bills. <laughs> then they started popping up in here, right? So like, $1,000 for this, $1,000 for 2000 and, and insurance is only taking a small piece of that because I just yeah. finally got insurance about a month. Mm-hmm. But I really, really thank the brothers and sisters. You were very generous. It was really useful. It came at the right time. I was always someone who said no to money and tell my money, no matter how broke I was. At that time, I wasn't saying no because I really, really needed that boost. And um, I love y'all, love y'all, love y'all. Um, bottom line, we're talking about music. We're talking about Tupac. Let's come back to Tupac as we move towards closing. Mm. Um, he was just a young black baby, man. He was just one of our babies that they murdered. Mm-hmm. Just like they murdered Nat Turner. Mm-hmm. Just like they murdered Dr. King. I mean, so you can't compare Tupac to Dr. King. Why not? Dr. King was a messenger. Tupac was a messenger. The, mm-hmm. the, the vehicle in which they brought the message was different. But listen to the message. And I bet you're going to find a lot of sameness in the message. Mm-hmm. Malcolm X was a messenger. Tupac was a messenger. Mm-hmm. Messenger and just Tupac couldn't be a Malcolm. There was no nation of Islam for him to say what he was stealing. Mm-hmm. He came out of the belly of a Phoenicia court. She was a revolutionary activist in the Black Panther Party and Black Liberation Army. Mm-hmm. He's a Shakur. Mm-hmm. You know, raised by Matula Shakur, the head of the Black Liberation Army. Mm-hmm. Okay. Godfather by Sekou Odinga, the founder, one of the founders of the Black Liberation Army. Come on. Y'all mm-hmm. don't know who Tupac was mm-hmm. and what he came out of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he went to classical music school. He wasn't just some dude saying yada, yada, yada. He understood music. He could write music Mm -hmm. and read music, Mm -hmm. you know? But we invented music. So even when we didn't read it and write it, we didn't have to because we invented music, you know? And the average jazz piece, you know, if you look at the average European composition, Mm -hmm. they're dealing with what? Three, four bars. Mm-hmm. The average jazz composition, you may be 14, 15. Mm. They can't get up there. Complex. You know, compound complex. Ooh. Right? You know? So, but we, he was a young messenger and made mistakes. Of course, he made mistakes. He didn't have nobody out there guiding him that really knew how to guide him through the political arena, through the economic arena. Mm-hmm. He did not truly understand. He knew it because he talked about it in his music. He talked about it in his poetry. He understood colonialism, imperialism, capitalism, and oppression because he told you about him. Listen to his words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't just be emotional about him. Listen to the poetry that is his music. Mm -hmm. And then you'll know who killed him because he tell you who we're up against. Mm He tell you who's trying to destroy us. He tell you who we fight. He tell you why we need to fight them. Mm -hmm. They did not like that. Mm -hmm. Okay? They did not like that. Michael came back here after having been away for a while in the Arab world, protected by his brothers. And he said, they don't care nothing about us. Mm-hmm. But he didn't just say it in a word. He made it into music. Song, yeah. Made a song. And he was about to take it across the world. Yeah. Michael gone. You know? Study yeah. Prince. What was Prince's life was? What was Prince doing around distribution, controlling his masters at the time his life ended? Mm-hmm. And then you have to ask yourself a fundamental question. Who is responsible for all of this carnage that right. has taken place to black, young black uh, performing artists over mm-hmm. these decades? Mm-hmm. And you're going to find the same people. Mm. You, know, you, don't, you don't have to go through now. You don't even have to believe me. Just Google it. Ask the right question on Google. It's a, the Google is a worldwide library. Yeah. Got everybody information up in there. Oh, yeah. Ask the question you want. Who would want to kill Tupac over distribution? This ask the question. I guarantee you Google gonna give you an answer. What the mm-hmm. probabilities and the possibilities are, given mm-hmm. who's in control of what. 
then ask the question, who controls distribution? Just ask it. Google it. I did it tonight a few times and see what the answer you're going to get. Mm -hmm. A lot of praiseworthy names. Let's see the mm -hmm. answer you're going to get. You know, Look up the Columbia study done by Harvard Business School in 1972 when they recommend this is the, as you don't have to get them in 25 year contract. And it wasn't just about the music. It was about how to manipulate the environment of soul music. Mm. Mm. They were clear they wanted to control black people. Yeah. And so what, we just kind of, what, what, Professor, what was your opinion on Soul Train? Remember Soul Train? What's your, what's your take on that and the effectiveness of dance? along with music my, magnificent phenomena that that brother pulled off but they made him suffer too you know he suffered that same industry made him suffer too but he was a stand-up fighting brother he mm -hmm. fought to keep that peace going mm -hmm. but it was an opportunity to see africa every what was it saturday or sunday Sa saturday i think it was saturday saturday, it was saturday. saturday you saturday go to africa them brothers and sisters had moves man yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> they had moves you know, wow. and everybody, you get out there in your living room trying to imitate those moves. So when you had not that night, you can perform some of those moves. But yeah. it was a move that got a chance to expose our music and watch the evolution of our music. Because mm -hmm. music transformed the human soul. Mm -hmm. Music transforms the human mind, either positive or negatively, depending on what music you're feeding to it. Right. And those who control the industry know what to feed into the minds of the youth of the world. Mm. The problem is so much of what they're doing that once negatively affect our youth is now negatively affecting their youth with this drug um, epidemic we have in America and the world yeah. today, which is sad to see any child dying from any kind of drugs. Mm -hmm. uh, our people have been forced to do it and endure it for so many uh, centuries really, but definitely for this last century. And now it's out of hand and mm -hmm. everybody's children is suffering right now. Everybody's family is going to funerals right now mm -hmm. from ODs and ODs. And you're still manipulating the mind of those young people, mm -hmm. taking away their hope, taking mm -hmm. away their future using music mm -hmm. so that you can control the marketplace of who will be able to compete against you to control capital in the world. Because mm -hmm. it all comes down to politics at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Economic politics and culture. Mm -hmm. Culture is the music they use to control you so you do not overtake them in the economic or political arena. Mm -hmm. You heard that, right? You understand that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that clear enough for you? Oh, yeah. Economic mm -hmm. politics and culture. You use the culture to control, to keep you from overtaking them in the pol political and economic arena. Mm. The control of your culture, okay. you can capture your politics, and you can know where and how to use your economics. Because we got money. Mm -hmm. We're not broke. We're not impoverished. Mm -hmm. We spent almost $2 trillion last year, but we spent it in the wrong place with the mm -hmm. wrong people for the wrong things. Mm -hmm. Culture influence how you spent that money. Music is the biggest influencer in culture. Mm. So music is at the top, then, of all of this, the Professor. Top. It's at the top. Brainwashing music is the Clorox. Woo! So the Clorox. Damn, you, Professor, you was on fire all night tonight, brother. Yeah, just, I could tell you you was passionate about this topic. I'm glad I called you. Yeah. You've been on fire yeah, I was, I was hours actually straight. thinking about you. You know, I was actually thinking about you all week. I said, dang. And then when you call, I go like, he heard me. He picked yeah. up. The, the uh you know the telepathy you know mm -hmm. you, you, I, I felt your energy professor but i knew i want to get you on before you um because i know king simon yeah we gonna get a, to you. you need to throw that atlanta piece up there one more time yeah let, 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 real quick let's put this up here before we uh end the show real quick family let me let y'all know for those who are in the atlanta area the legendary Professor James Smalls come to Atlanta, Georgia for two days. April 6th and April 7th, you don't want to miss it. He's doing a public and a private event. Text me right now at 347-496-1022. That's 347-496-1022. The legendary Professor James Smalls, as you've seen him on Hidden Colors and all the rest of the documentaries. Make sure you go to my link tree at linktree forward slash King Simon and Numero Beta. Professor James Smalls in Atlanta, April 6th and April 7th. 
right, all right. Yeah, somebody wrote the air for brainwashing music is the Clorox. Brainwashing music is the Clorox. Yo, (laughs) where's that? Hold up, where's King Sam family? Professor went on for an hour straight. Make sure you hit up this brother, and I want to thank y'all for supporting this brother. Um, I gave a lot of y'all gave uh, hit the brother's cash app up if you could continue to support the brother. The brother had a big surgery, took him out of commission for a long time, and the donations that he received. From this channel came in big time as you just okay. said insurance I company. really really appreciate it yeah, really. yeah 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 so thank you to everybody who uh donated to our elder we gotta appreciate and take care of our elders while they are here with us giving us this wisdom and gems that he gave during the show today Get, telling us stories that i've never heard before y'all never heard before and that we can learn from so i want to thank you professor once again for coming on the show and yes, sir. Uh, um, talking about private conversations with Pac and other people and just teaching us the game. How does game go out here? Uh, anything um, any, anything you want to tell the people before we get out of here, Professor? That, that we need to love up on Haiti right now. We need to write our elected officials, text our elected, and tell them hands off of Haiti. Do not send any troops into Haiti against our people. Don't believe the lie about the gangs, all right? Mm-hmm. That's their mythology. They ran the same kind of games on us when they want to roll in with the cops and throw us in prison or they're a bunch of gangs with the Crips and the Bloods killing everybody in the black community, you know? Yeah. And they're doing that same thing with Haiti. You can drive port- from Port-au-Prince 10 minutes, 15 minutes down the road to Pétionville and you won't know you in Haiti, you hear me? You think mm-hmm. you're down in Times Square, okay? Mm-hmm. But why don't they show Pétionville? You know, why don't they show some of the other beautiful parts of Haiti, but none of this is happening. They just centered on two streets in Port-au-Prince mm. that have been in rubble since the earthquake because they stole the $30 billion that was sent to rebuild the city. Mm. But I can't call the name of the thieves, but everybody know who the thieves were. Mm. You know, just just go to, uh, um, what is it called? Uh, Ezele Danto's channel with, um, just look up Haiti, my brain is tired right now. It's but just going to Haiti, you see who stole the money, you know? But yeah. the people with the guns, remember, there's no factory making guns in Haiti. Mm. And the people with the guns are poor kids in the streets. They have no money to buy no guns. So mm. beg the question, who gave them the guns? Mm. Mm. They have no money to buy guns. Mm. No guns is made in the country. Who mm. gave them the guns? Mm. And then now call them gangs. You know, it's, it's like that story that we're raping. And I'm sure some of them are gangsters and crooks because that's all they could be given the situation and circumstances that the core group have put them under. And I will call their name because they are governments. Mm-hmm. And there is a core group. But no, I'm not going to do that either because they may come messing with you. <laughs> I don't want them messing with Brother Rich. But anybody can look up the core group and see who are the nations that are controlling Haiti. And I'll just leave with this last piece. Haley, Haiti's got the iridium, one of the mo- most important metal in the world, 50 grand per ounce, right? Wow. It has the largest oil reserve in the Caribbean, which they're not allowed to drill for. It has a natural gas reserve, which America won't allow them to drill for. Haiti has gold that's being mined by these core group countries. Haiti has, um, what do you call it? Um, copper being mined by these companies and on and on. They're, these people are not poor. Haiti is one of the richest resource country in the Caribbean. Why won't these people leave them alone to build their own countries? Mm. Now, now go and do the study. See how many of Haiti's president was assassinated. Not just the one in your lifetime. They assassinated others. America invaded Haiti in 1915. Stayed there with the Marines occupied until 1934. Stole the Haiti's gold reserve using Citibank to do it. This is a part of, part of records. Citibank can't hide from this. Citibank was in charge of it, brought in by the government to be in charge of the Haitian bank. They take all the Haitian gold and bring it to New York and have never returned it. Give oh. me a break. Oh. You know what I'm saying? So let's love up on Haiti, study Haitian uh, modern history, see what's really going on. Don't buy the hype. The same people that dogged us out in the media, calling us gangsters and all of this stuff, is the same people that's dogging out the Haitian people. Oh. Love up on your brothers and sisters, because Haiti and you, you're the same people. One just live a little bit that way, and the other one live a little bit this way. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Move the distance, and I'm on that island, and they're in New York. Mm-hmm. Simple mm-hmm. as that. Mm-hmm. 
I want to thank you once again, Professor, for coming on the show. Absolutely yes, amazing sir. show. Instant classic family. Make sure y'all share this with someone you love because everybody needs to see this show. And buy the books yeah. I told you. Buy yeah. those books. Yeah, definitely get the books. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I appreciate it. Uh, I'll be back Wednesday. Won't be on the mall. I will be back Wednesday. With that being said, we getting out of here. Signing out. See you next time. Thank you, Professor. Peace. Peace and blessings. All right.